Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us at Qatar Sports Tech first ever innovative women of Qatar virtual panel discussion. Uh, we are pleased to be uh, to see you all here, and we hope uh, this talk will inspire you for your upcoming for the upcoming uh, hackathon. Uh, I'm Aisha Rumayhi. Um, I oversee the strategic initiatives and collaboration um, at QDB's incubators, um, and I will be moderating today's session. Um, I'm honored to be today here uh, to open the floor to three brilliant uh, women ladies, uh, women, um, and uh, who are um, at the front, uh, forefront of Qatar's uh, most innovative business businesses. Uh, please let me introduce them. Uh, we have with us today Dr. Uh, Buthayn Al-Ansari. She's the CEO of Strike uh, Markham, a Qatari creative and event uh, management agency, uh, as well as uh, Tamkeen, um, a training um, and consultancy that provide consulting solution to some of the um, uh, largest companies here in Qatar, including Qatar National Bank, Ali Bin Ali Group, and Asdan Holding. Uh, Dr. Al Ansari holds a DPA in Business Administration from Nottingham Trent University in the UK, specializing in women uh, in leadership positions. Uh, Dr. Buthayna, also a board member of several businesses associations and um, uh, the corporate social responsibility branch of Dar al Sharq Group, um, and has also published several publications. Um, thank you for being here with us, Dr. Al Ansari. Thank you. Um, our second panelist is uh, Ms. Haifa Abdullah, um, the Innovation Director at Qatar Science and Technology Park. Um, Haifa manages a um, support program uh, for tech entrepreneurs aimed to developing um, the global uh, and the regional uh, tech innovation ecosystem. Um, she has uh, previously held uh, diverse management uh, responsibilities in ICT while, work while working at um, QST, uh, Qatar Petroleum and uh, Qatar University. She's a board member of uh, Qatar uh, Mobility Innovation Center, QMIC. Um, which aims to boost smart mobility systems in Qatar and uh, in the region. Um, welcome and thank you, for, thank you for joining us today. And uh, please allow me to introduce uh, Ms. Hiba Al-Masri, uh, Qatar's Sports Tech Managing Director. Hiba has nearly eight years of experience um, in the sports industry, in addition to extensive experience in incubators and, ac uh, and accelerators in the US and the Gulf. Uh, Hiba is a board member, uh, is a member actually of the um, National Business Incubation Association and was dis uh, uh, distinguished uh, by several prestigious awards um, for her outstanding work with incubators and entrepreneurs. Um, under Hiba's uh, management, QST was featured as one of the leading accelerators in the Asia region by Sports Tech X this year. Uh, good afternoon, Hiba, and uh, happy to have you with us today. Thank you, Aisha. Glad to be here. So for today's discussion, um, we will start with the questions to the panelists about their experiences and um, their uh, perception of being a female leaders in Qatar. Afterward, we will open the floor for questions um, from uh, our uh, participants and audience. Um, we hope this discussion will provide you with some guidance, uh, fresh ideas, and uh, the confidence to start your entrepreneurial journey and leadership uh, roles. For the, for the 48 um, upcoming hours, you will be generating ideas, building teams, and solving the most complex sports industry challenges. I hope you will enjoy um, this unique um, experience. Uh, and through our discussion, uh, um, with our um, inspiring speakers, uh, we also aim to provide um, an in-depth outlook um, on the challenges and perspectives of female leadership. Our speakers also will share their um, know-how and experiences with you. So let us now wait um, uh, any longer and um, get to know more about their uh, accomplishment. So let's start uh, with uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Buthayna and Hiba. So if you can tell us more about um, your achieve achievements. Uh, so can you tell me yeah. more about it? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-Mursaleen. Yaqul Allah Ta'ala fi kitabah 
ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. First of all, I would like to thank you for having me with this estimated panel to discuss many topics related to empower women in Qatar. There is a saying say when you ask someone about their achievement, it's more difficult to ask them about their weaknesses point. So any achievement in any uh, woman life, there is a lot of stories behind it. Talking about commitment, talking about sacrificing with your social life, talking about uh, having the right objective to be achieved, uh, forgetting everything related to your uh, uh, social uh, life in, in terms of entertainment and other things. When you say that I achieved something, you can name it and you can list it. But we want to teach the audience how we can reach to this point and how we did it. So the commitment is number one. Second thing, you have to have the uh, smart objective that will enable you to achieve it. Uh, so don't always dream big without a good solid ground that be beneath you. You have to be equipped by the right education, right skills. Uh, reading a lot of uh, other people's experience. You have to have a role model in front of you to test your ability to reach uh, as she reached uh, in her life. So positioning myself uh, in Qatar community and outside Qatar as a role model and as a successful reader, this is a most successful uh, or achievable thing that I can say it. Uh, once you, uh, cons uh, the community consider you as a role model, this is a big achievement. Uh, plus, uh, uh, earning the DBA, Doctor of Business Administration, was of my biggest achievement since I'm a married woman, have four kids, a lot of commitments, and I'm also an owner of uh, multi-companies, board members here and here. So, dedicated yourself and committed to the uh, demanding program in UK, this is a, a big achievement. Last but not least, uh, one of my dream was uh, developing and initi initiating a local application uh, related to audiobox. It's called Safahad, and it took me three years to develop it. And I really proud to say that it's ready now, and it is uh, an iTunes and Android. You can upload it. It's called Safahad. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's great. We have an entrepreneur yeah, on board okay. with us. So, <laughs> what about you, Haifa? Can you just? Tell me more about your biggest achievements and um, if there is like any support system um, that that's really helped you uh, here in Qatar. You know, uh, since I was, I think, a student at the university and since I was young, I had always this persistent question that why we don't have or why do we lack innovation in the Arab world? Like, why do we don't we have entrepreneurs that we see outside? Why don't we have products that are developed locally? And luckily, like I joined a position where this was particularly the job I was assigned to. A few years ago, I got assigned to manage the incubation center at Qatar Science and Technology Park. And at that point, I thought I can make it happen. And the, the, the nice thing is like, everybody didn't believe at that time this can be possible because of like tech entrepreneurship in this region was very new to, to the scene. So the way I did it is really like, I. Since, since we're part of Qatar Foundation, we managed to connect with the universities, get bright minds. For me, it was very essential to build around the people. So let's bring the best entrepreneurs in the country and put them in the incubation center and everything will be sorted out. So I didn't care much about the logistic, how beautiful is the building, but I thought about like, let's bring the brightest minds and everything is gonna build around it. And this is what happened actually today when I walk around the incubation center, I see the startups, I'm so proud of what we achieved so far. And I'm even prouder when I see like uh, the products that were developed within that incubation center today in the market. Mm -hmm. So I've seen a lot of like, you know, applications that people are using today in Qatar, a lot of devices that people you can touch today, that you can go online and buy them. So for me, this is like really something that was a dream at some point, And I was lucky to be part of making this happen. And moving to Hiba, so can you tell us more about your um, biggest achievement and what supports that really support you and the sports industry in particular? So I mean, I'll tell you about uh, how I got into the entrepreneurship scene back in 2008. So um, then one of my biggest achievements happened at that time. I started, uh, I was finishing up my university with my, through my MBA. 
I started my first business and I had two kids in three years. So it was really very hectic time. But further that, I was uh, helping out the dean within the university to start this virtual incubator. And that's what the first incubator ever within the city that I was in. Um, that year, the uh, one main focus uh, startup that I was helping won the Innovative Award. And it was through the work that we did through the university. A few years later, we, we moved abroad, my family, and uh, I started very similar thing to what we're doing here in uh, QSD, the incubator and uh, entrepreneurship center in another Gulf state. Uh, the same thing, within one year, we won a really big award in the Arab world, the most uh, prestigious uh, incubator within the Arab world for that year. And then uh, I come here to QST back in 2019, and the same thing, we achieved the, the most innovative award from QFC. So I go back to one of the biggest achievements of mine is being able to work with a really well-rounded team. So surrounding yourself with the right people, and then you're able to achieve, achieve anything. Interesting. So, so, so you need you really need to have a good team yes. in order to achieve your goals. Uh, moving back to um, Dr. Uh, Al Ansari and Haifa. So, um, um, Qatar has um, how Qatar has grown um, over the last ten years to nourish female leaders from your perspective. Like, how how do you expect it to change over the next years, Bad? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, really, I always refer uh, to the development that's happening in uh, Qatar, to the Qatar Vision 2030, since it consists of uh, four, uh, four pillars, investing in human capital, um, uh, social development, economical development, as well as environmental uh, development. So, uh, as you can see, the first pillar within the Qatar Vision 2030, invest in human capital. Then we move to the second one, which is social development. This pillar has the um, women empowerment. If we read about the uh, Qatar Vision 2030, there is a special uh, pillar saying empowering uh, women mm -hmm. in Qatar. Uh, the ecosystem uh, helped us a lot, especially in two parts of the um, social development pillar, which contains the education system as well as the health system. Any country, if they want to achieve or they want to go globally, they have to focus on those two pillars, which is the uh, health sector and the uh, education sector. Uh, back in the 50s, Qatar invested a lot uh, of uh, capitals in uh, education. Uh, it started with the two schools, one male and female. Then you can see how a big movement happened in 2020 with lots of uh, universities from different regions, European, American, Australian, from different uh, culture and mindset. So all these uh, changes affecting uh, the mindset of decision takers and makers in Qatar, uh, especially when you want to uh, join any company, any organization, or apply for any job, there is now a big change in the mindset of the decision maker, the CEOs, the board members. They are helping to increase women uh, quota uh, within uh, senior position, middle management, entry level. And also there is a big uh, sign for that. If you can uh, check the uh, percentage of women graduate from universities, holding uh, uh, higher education certificates, uh, PhD, masters, all are women. So are, we are coming and we are competing them a lot in uh, different uh, sectors uh, because uh, women in Qatar know uh, that she is focused only in education sector and health sector. Now we can see women in everywhere, Qatari women. Uh, and this is really because the system that helped her to achieve uh, these positions. Yeah, and moving to Haifa, um, as, as Dr. Lansari just mentioned, um, where do you see, um, I mean, like the, the, the entrepreneurial scene with, with women involvement in the next 10 years? So in terms, yeah, as, as uh, Dr. Buthayna mentioned, I think in terms of leadership in, in certain areas or certain pillars, things has progressed very impressively. So I can say, like, as she said, it's the education pillar. We have a lot of female leaders, innovation pillar as well. Like, this is very impressive to see a lot of women leading, like in, in the innovation side of things. Mm -hmm. I still aspire in different areas or different sectors, let's say like the oil and gas, energy, technology. I would love to see more female involvement in terms of leadership and entrepreneurship as well. So I would love to see like more women leading tech entrepreneurship projects, tech, tech startups, and 
uh, technology-led projects. So this is what I really aim to, to see more in the future. And I'm, I'm sure this will, will happen soon. So I think with all the support system that we have, I do aspire to see, especially in the entrepreneurship scene, to take women to take lead as well in that. And as a area. significant leader uh, in your field, uh, what's the main barriers that faced you back then since, since joining? Well, I think the opportunities are there. Like for, for women, they are probably at, at the moment, because like, you know, in the past, women studied or the, their backgrounds were like in certain areas. I was, it was rare to find like, you know, a woman who did uh, engineering or mm -hmm. science or technology background. So, but now I, I see like, you know, with, with all these universities, with all these like young graduates graduating from different schools of engineering uh, and women with technology background, they can actually take a step forward and, and take a lead on, on tech entrep uh, entrepreneurship, inshallah, in the future. And Hiba, from your perspective, what's, what's the, um, and how did you overcome the challenges that you uh, went through during your journey? So fortunately for me, I came into my career at a time where women were accepted in the workplace because of women such as yourselves. You know, you guys did all the work for us in the United States, your type, uh, your leadership roles. So I didn't find challenges um, within neither sports nor being in entrepreneurship at all. Actually, uh, we were at the point where it was uh, promoted. Women in sports was being promoted and still is really. Um, where, where I did find challenges within my own household. So I came up with, I was brought up with uh, very strict parents and that's where I found the barriers for my career. Um, it, overcoming them was very basic to, okay, just keeping, keeping them in mind and keeping them happy but still whether it was let's read more or engage more with people that are more like-minded other females or even hanging out with my uncles and aunties who were entrepreneurs themselves mm -hmm. so th this is where I really found when I uh, what barriers did I find it was within my own household and then now it's they're more than supportive and uh, the times have changed so I see a very I, I bright future like, in well, whenever you reach the level and you convince them with your achievement, all of these barriers will be like not way. I, <laughs> yeah, this is exactly it. And it's not, it, it, it won't take you convincing them through speaking. It's with action. Exactly. It's once they read the first article about you or hear somebody else speaking, oh, you're, you know, have uh, father or brother or whatever, then, then they're listening. Interesting. And this is, takes, takes me back with you, Dr. Ansari. Um, uh, what resources do you wish were there in the place at that time that would have uh, tremendously supported you on your journey? Uh, going back to uh, يعني, my uh, first uh, starting my uh, career in Qatar, uh, I will not tell you how old I am, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's since 18 years I'm in the market, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. I faced a lot of uh, changes and uh, here and there, uh, but before, you know, there were a lot of limitation uh, mm -hmm. to to be uh, listed uh, now. Uh, yani, uh, in the media, we couldn't be uh, just talk to the media or appear in the newspaper or magazines. Uh, I have to say, and I always repeat that, uh, Sheikh Hamaza did a massive job uh, empowering women and move her to the second level in, in Qatar and GCC as well. So she gave us the full supporting system in terms of changing the mindset. This is, was a big challenge for all the women in Qatar. Uh, you know, as a, uh, in the GCC region, many inherited uh, issues in the wrong way and it keeps passing from generation to other generation. Until today, uh, if you go back to your question regarding the barriers, 20% uh, is, there is an individual barriers, 20% uh, community uh, barriers, 60% coming from the mindset and the way that men were raised by their families. So this is the big issue we are facing in Qatar. Yeah, I mean, the system is brilliant. Uh, the leadership is supporting us a lot. But there are some tiny here and here we have to fix it. But Alhamdulillah, we reached a maturity stage. Uh, so there wasn't uh, a freedom to be in a media. Uh, there was uh, no quota to uh, have men and women in certain level. Mm -hmm. There are there wasn't any charity or donation uh, strategy or project in Qatar. It's always focusing private uh, government sector. It was a shame that you work in uh, uh, private, private sector, sector and also financial or telecom sector. These all inherited issues are gone, are vanished. 
uh, and especially what we need now, we need a lot of gathering, forums, conferences, like what you are doing now, speaking to the public, telling them what they have to do to their kids. And, and, and yesterday you said a very good sentence. The parents will uh, be aware how important to support their kids once the leader has have a, a, a woman in, in her yeah. uh, house. So this is very important. Uh, uh, focusing and working in the mindset in schools and universities. And and how, how do you inspire yourself to create this change? <laughs> yeah, this is really... Uh, and being a mother, being a leader. Um, yani I always say, the, fi, fi, uh, there's an example in Arabic said behind any a great man, uh, there is a great woman. I'm saying my really supporting uh, husband uh, because of him, I'm here today. Mm -hmm. uh, and always I refer to my family uh, because uh, however you are successful in your education or, or, or your, in your professional life, if you didn't have the support from the house, from your family, regardless husband or, or father or any supporting uh, person in your life, you will not make it. Because once you have this a strong background, especially as a female, you need the support. Don't say, I will fly alone, I will do this. And it happens recently, some people are against the regimes and uh, in different countries, but where they end up, nothing. Yeah. You have to have the background, you have to have the solid infrastructure uh, at the bottom line. So when I inspire myself, I said, my country gave me a lot. I have to go back yeah. and give them back. So like what we do, contribution to different panel contribution to different conferences talking uh, about our experience this is inspiring yeah. me it's a win-win situation doing good you will gain good again. yeah i agree and haifa um, um do you recommend any any programs or events uh, that women should participate in from your experience being involved in all of uh, these ecosystem activities and programs I'm a strong believer, you know, of, of the learning uh, experience. So for me, it's very important for any any woman uh, to follow her passion. So whatever passion you have, find a training or find a way to learn or get that exposure. So if you're, if you're like, let's say, if you're interested in fashion, go to VCU, find a fashion class. Uh, if you're interested in uh, arts, find find a tutor, find somebody who teaches you, read a book about this. If you're If you want to be an entrepreneur, Go to an incubator, get get some support. There, there are a lot of like you know opportunities for you to expose yourself. So before doing something, get to experience it, get to put yourself in a, a learning way. Find a mentor, find someone to help you as well. So for me, this is very important. Like whatever passion you have, follow follow your passion, train yourself, be ready. Then get into the support system. Putting yourself, for example, as an entrepreneur within an incubator or accelerator gets you exposed to other people. You see others, you learn from the experience. Don't, don't be alone, don't be shy or sit in your own silo. Just expose yourself, try things out. Don't, don't be in, in your silo, don't suffer alone. So that's my advice. And especially within the maturing ecosystem, I think ladies now are very lucky to have a lot of options. Interesting. And and Heba, what about you? You are coming from an international background. Yes. So um, is there like any certain programs that you highly recommend? Um, I mean, like um, young uh, entrepreneurs yeah. to take or uh, participate in? You know, uh, what's really beautiful and what I found here in Qatar is that there's so much support for entrepreneurs. It's everywhere you look, you know, you have DIC, you have QSTP, you have QST, you have Cubic. It's just so much and so much support that, like uh, you had mentioned, it's whatever you want to get into, there's support for, the, for it there. If it's not in universities, it's in within the incubators. But I do have to put a special promotion for our, our new interlock program. So this is something that we are, we just launched uh, and applications are open. And this is for anybody who's interested in having uh, a business in uh, sports specifically. Um, we highly encourage females to do this. This is the reason why we are having this uh, hackathon and webinar today. Um, at QSD, we have a team of five females. So we're very proud of that because we are a small team at the end of the day. And uh, you will find a lot of support here. So um, definitely reach out to one of us. You can reach out for, to QSDP. You can reach out to any of us. We, and I would probably speak for all of us that we are real willing to help any female that reaches out to us for any help. Um, and of course, 
for anything that they need, whether it's just advice or mentorship. And um, just to conclude, uh, Dr. Ansari, if there is any uh, message that or advice that you would like to share uh, to the next generation of women uh, in Qatar that they are interested in entrepreneurship and want to become a leader in their community or their field. Uh, we will talk uh, woman to woman, uh, regardless of uh, my position or their position as a students or uh, job holders or I'm as a CEO or a board member, we will talk woman to woman. Uh, this is my message to all of uh, Qatari young uh, girls. Uh, nothing is easy and nothing is free and nothing is impossible. Uh, when you will enter to the uh, working life, it is really difficult uh, to sustain and to survive. Uh, if you want to differentiate yourself, you have to listen to your inner voice and never ever listen to negative people around you because a lot of people will pop up and pull you down and underestimate your skills and your uh, successful projects, uh, especially from uh, close friends and you will find a lot of people uh, will get, the, their number will get decreased uh, surrounding you. You have to equip yourself with a solid education. This is very important. I will keep repeating this point in every panel, in every conference. I will contribute education, education, education. Second thing, you have to surround yourself with a positive people. Third thing, you have to choose the right track with, which will suit your passion and your interest. And don't keep changing from one field to other. So try to choose the right segment with the community. For example, I choose to empower women and a human development area. And my whole career, I focused on this issue. Don't jump, jump from uh, one sector to other. Be patient. We spent 18 years to reach this moment and talk to you all guys. So a new generation, they are really uh, need to, to calm down. Uh, uh, the last point I want to highlight it, and this is really killing me. The recognition and appreciation going to uh, other people than not who is holding the uh, master degree uh, and PhD degrees and a very knowledgeable person to the bloggers and the fashionista and these people are in the front seated, the invitation got to them, every prices and every awards and every appreciation goes to them. This, uh, don't let this to let you down. Uh, just focus and this is just the bubbles within the market and it will explore one day inshallah as soon this is my expectation I write a lot about it and I think now my the fashionistas my friend will hate me now to talk about <laughs> this but I need to balance this but really it's killing me uh, Amsha <laughs> so we have to I, I call all, all people or especially women who is really having a qualification in writing books entrepreneur Come, speak, uh, go to the public, present yourself, participate in different occasions. Don't just be behind the scenes. We need you guys. We need you to invent the economic, economic wheels in Qatar. Thank you for having me. Oh, what about, thank you, doctor. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, what about you, Haifa? Now I'm is speechless there, yeah. about it. Is <laughs> there like any, any particular advice from your experience well, I think that you like, can I, I totally agree with Dr. Bethena. I, I really advise women to believe in themselves. There, there will be a lot of challenges. We, we face challenges and everyone is going to face challenges. But again, there are a lot of opportunities. So be positive. Look, look at the opportunities. I mean, this generation is, is lucky somehow because the challenges are a little bit less. And yeah. I think we as women suffered, I don't think we want our daughters to suffer more, anymore. Yes. So we will, will, will be supportive to them as well. And speak up. I mean, that's very important. I think uh, in our community, especially like women are really like, you know, reluctant to raise their voice or speak up or share their opinions. So whether you are like, you know, an employee in the organization, whether you're a leader or a board member, or, you know, like even like if you are a blogger or uh, you, you have a, uh, an Instagram account, you just simply express yourself, express your talent, show, show people who you are, believe in yourself and then show, show others who, who you really are, yeah. show your talent. That's definitely a great yeah. insight. Yeah. Like education is like the key to everything. And what about you, Habali? I do have points to add, although obviously they're very beautiful. I do want to emphasize that to take every opportunity. If there's, if there's something going on, if there's an event, rather than 
you know, socializing, you said, or entertaining yourself, take the opportunity to learn something new, to get yourself out there, to meet new people. Um, this is a really big point to accelerate your career and to really be become a leader. Uh, I do want to also emphasize to find a role model and find female mentors. This is really important. If you find somebody who can show you the support, no matter what negativity you hear or come across, you'll always have that one person or few people to refer back to that uplift you and keep you going. So that, those two that's a are... great thing to highlight the mentor yeah. part, uh, the mentorship part. Like it, it's yes. one of the uh, main yes. elements for success. Yes. So just to sum up the, the messages of advisors that you just passed, that, so education is, is one of the main um, elements to support um, anyone who would like to take any path, um, focus and uh, take the right path and, uh, and select the, the right uh, major, let's say, uh, to, to follow your passion, being passionate of, of everything you are doing, um, um, have, a, have or create a good network, have a mentor, so these are like one of the key advices that we can carry out today with us. Um, thank you, ladies, for being um, with us today and share all of your inspiring stories to, and precious uh, recommendations. Indeed, uh, today, was, today is probably the best time uh, for women uh, to be in businesses here in Qatar. And even... Sorry. Uh, and even... What happened? <laughs> okay. So, and what... And even... Um, uh, even though there is still uh, many challenges ahead, uh, challenges ahead, um, obstacles can, uh, can be overcome and um, enough uh, tensity, uh, with enough tensity and passion. Um, Qatar, as you all know, that provides uh, multiple programs encouraging and supporting women in business. And this, is ha this hackathon is one of it. Um, it's a great opportunity and example that uh, you can take. Um, now I would like to open the floor for our audience uh, questions. Um, and we have a couple of them. Um, one of our audience is thanking us and is asking, uh, do you think that the younger generation, especially young women, um, are better equipped to lead businesses? I would say to Haifa. Her, her. Well, I think because of the, the nature of how things evolved, yes, I think younger people, like they have more opportunities, especially to be entrepreneurs, I would say, because now there's more competition in the market and competition sometimes is not bad. Mm -hmm. So for me, yes. That will raise the skill set of women as leaders today. Uh, so uh, this is the question that I have with us. Uh, another question is to uh, Hiba. Um, uh, what do you think of the um, the the, um, the 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 women entrepreneurs who who applied here to join uh, in terms of material and background? Uh, to a QST. So, so we have a really nice success story from our last hackathon. Uh, it was open to both male and female. And uh, the top three winning teams were female led teams. The top first was all female based. So, I, I mean, that says all. It's, uh, it, they are ambitious, they are hardworking. Um, and I go back to if they are educated, then they can achieve anything. There's no gender difference with that with, when it comes to your position in the career. Um, I have another question um, um, to Dr. Ansari. It says, uh, multiple studies shows that women's decisions are different from those taken by men. Uh, what do you think is the key component that differentiate women as better decision makers? Okay. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, there was a study by uh, Deloitte in 2017, uh, and uh, their uh, survey was uh, distributed among 1,600 uh, uh, CEOs from 93 countries. And uh, it was the same question, why, uh, what is uh, privileged women in taking decision uh, better than men? There are many elements. Uh, it's, women are more wiser than men, sorry to say that. And they are uh, calculating things uh, in uh, different ways. And also her, uh, you know, emotion involved in the decisions, uh, but in the right place, not, uh, uh, يعني, not personal thing or, you know, I will give a privilege to other on, on someone and someone other. Uh, so she is calcul calculating things, uh, asking a lot of questions to find the facts and 
uh, information about the topic that the, she asked, she has been asked to take a decision. She involved uh, people surrounding her and take also their point of view. She is not a sole uh, maker only uh, for a decision maker. Uh, she asked uh, people around her, uh, dig for more information, uh, taking more time. Consult. Uh, yeah, do to consult. Definitely. Um, and uh, we have uh, another question to Haifa. Um, do you think that the educational system uh, must be transformed to better uh, incentivized girls to take a, a successful business career? I think in general, like our, our education system needs to be refined to encourage more of entrepreneurship mindset, regardless of the gender, because I believe now the, the education system serves to um, create or to generate people who are employed, mm -hmm. right? So what we need is more of mindset of problem solvers, innovators, uh, entrepreneurs, leaders. These are the kind of skill set that we need our our uh, ecosystem of education to to produce. Interesting. Also, post to the uh, pandemic happened for the coronavirus, as Haifa said, there are a lot of uh, major changes that should happen in the education system. Uh, I was uh, voting for a lot of change in education system. Uh, two things should be entered to the curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, the entrepreneurship, as well as the CC CSR, the corporate social responsibility. And I'm really always uh, asking to have an umbrella to uh, adopt the corporate social responsibility uh, understanding. And this is very important uh, things to enable uh, different uh, segments in the community to participate in the development area that Qatar is uh, having today. I hope they can they yeah. listen. <laughs> so um, I have one last question uh, um, to, to Hiba. Um, since you just took the lead and follow your passion in the sports, uh, how did you know that this is what you really wanted to know and continue doing it throughout the years? So I grew up playing uh, sports and we grew up in a family that my siblings and I were very sports heavy. Um, and of course, what child doesn't love sports, right? The majority of us, we grew really excited about it. And this is pre iPad or <laughs> gaming. So yeah. we played outside. Um, I played up until college and then I met my husband who was also a very sports fanatic and also played uh, in a professional level. Mm -hmm. um, and once we got married, it was just, this is, our life was revolved around that, right? So he would play, I would play, or he would ref and we would all go together and he took on uh, coaching. So it just, it happened where my life situations made it happen. Um, my uh, career was at uh, with the entrepreneurship in general at that time and then when I gained enough experience within sports and sports tech became very very popular it just got merged so together. So you naturally. merged you merged both passion yes, together. Exactly. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, so um, is there like anything that you would like to add uh, or pass a message to our participants uh, before we end up the session Victor? Uh, well uh, I'm just uh, grabbing this opportunity to thank you all people behind the cameras and uh, in this place, uh, it, it, uh, they helped us to make it happen. Uh, thank you for the audience and for their questions. Uh, happy to contribute to another uh, panel in the future, inshallah. Uh, thank you, Asha, for having us today and moderate uh, this uh, panel. Uh, and that's it. Thank so you. thank you. I would like to thank you all uh, for participating and uh, being very in, in such a productive uh, discussion. Uh, we must acknowledge that tremendous uh, progress women made in business uh, here in Qatar uh, over the past years. And uh, this is just the beginning of the journey. A special thank to our speakers uh, who helped us to understand uh, the implications of being innovative women in business. I would also like to encourage you all to participate um, in this hackathon and remain as curious and energetic as you are. Um, the innovative, the innovative, uh, the innovative women of Qatar virtual hackathon is a perfect launchpad uh, for women to kick uh, and to start their entrepreneurial journey. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.